The Tech Nervous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Hey folks, Technivers here. Please excuse the mess, it should be gone by the end of this video. Today we are working on printing props, and I have here a decent rendition, I should say, of the Elder Wand from Harry Potter. Now this was the wand that was given to the Three Brothers by Death. It is part of the Deathly Hallows, and was Dumbledore's, then technically Malfoy's, and then it became Harry Potter's. But... Uh, we are actually printing a different wand in this video because I'm going to show you the technique I used for fusing these two pieces together with the resin because as you can see it does not fit inside the LD002R so this was printed in two pieces with support and I'm doing a similar item in here we're working on Voldemort's wand right now um, that will be painted a nice bone color and I think it should offset this quite nicely um, but when it is complete, we'll take it out of there. I will show it to you with the supports. We'll remove the supports, and I will show you how I assembled this one and then finished it before painting into one piece. The nice thing is with that resin, it's really easy to place a little bit into a seam and then harden it and do that a couple times, and then you can sand it down, and you get a fairly smooth, seamless transition. You can tell it's right here, um, but you really can't see any lines or anything like that so it seems like one fully functional piece I also must say that I like the heft of this if you hold this most of the weight the center of gravity is right about here um, so as far as a weapon goes this is actually kind of a very well thought out design especially if you're trying to flick and flourish the tip of it so uh, we will jump right into the post-processing process as soon as this printer finishes up so don't go anywhere we are printing right now on 3D printing props with Technivorous. Alright, so here we have our completed model in the tank. We're getting ready to take it out. Obviously, we're going to glove up first. Um, I'm going to show you how I removed this from the build plate. Some of the finishing that you're going to see in just a minute is going to be a little bit sped up because this video ended up being about 20 minutes long and I needed to reduce that time a little bit. So, as you can see, I don't have my production lights on right now. They run on a blue wavelength that can cure the resin, and we don't want that. It doesn't happen very fast. It's subtle, um, but we want to prevent that as much as possible. So I'm going to clean a little bit of this resin off of the top here. Uh, once we remove from the model from the build plate, I'll no longer be worried about curing the resin that's in the vat, and we can turn the light on. So you'll get a little bit better picture of what's going on. Let me just get most of this off of here. We'll go ahead and pull the build plate off, and I think I can scrape some excess just down the side here and into the vat. And as always, you want to try to avoid skin contact with this stuff. Um, you should be wearing a mask and gloves. You don't want to inhale the fumes too much. Uh, this is a pretty simple process. Basically, what I'm going to do is remove the parts. You'll see me doing a little bit of sanding and filing them down in order to fit them together properly. And then we're just going to take a little dab of the resin and we are going to put it on the seam and then we are just going to kind of spin it and take it out in the sun and rotate it around so that it seals up now using this process you can pretty much fill any seam it works really well it gets in the cracks and makes the model one solid piece but it does bead a little bit and probably will require a little extra sanding at that seam in order to make it unnoticeable so right now we are going to clip supports when i'm doing resin printing I always clip my supports while it is uncured um, because you get a little bit better of a disconnect. So let's get the model off here. I'm going to kind of just wrench it off of these supports here. I know they're going to break, so uh, there we go. And we can get the rest of this off of here and then set the plate aside for now. Uh, and then we can get to work on the model. now. Uh, this sat in the vat overnight. It was about an eight hour print. I started it yesterday morning. It finished about the time I went to bed last night and I let it just sit there and kind of drip dry. However, that UV protective case on the printer pretty much prevents any of the extra liquid that's on there from solidifying and it is pretty thick. So it's a little bit hard to uh, let it all drip off. So it does need a nice wash uh, if that's your preferred method. Sometimes I will cheat and grab a throwaway rag and just wipe off what I can while keeping my gloves on um, because I know I'm going to be applying a little bit more and that I think is the best way for me to work it out. So 
Uh, we now have the lid back on the printer. Let's see if I can get you a little bit better view of what we're doing. Turn the light on and we will check it out here. Okay, so as I said, this is a little bit sped up. You can see me removing some supports, kind of just digging out the hollows and getting the excess liquid resin out of the holes that I'm gonna need to use to join these together. So this piece comes with a uh, bottom and a top, and they both have holes in them in which you're supposed to place this peg into to secure it. Now the peg doesn't quite fit properly, so I did have to bust out some sandpaper and a file, and we will go ahead and sand that down. But first, let's get the rest of the supports off of the main part of the model. So um, I'm clipping them and dropping them into this tray here. Try not to scatter them everywhere. They're kind of a mess to pick up. But support removal is always hit or miss whether or not you can uh, keep it from going flying when you clip it. So I'm doing my best to try and kind of keep the mess all located in one area here. But we'll see how it goes. And now we're on to sanding. We're sanding down the peg. It is a little bit easier than sanding down the holes because it's hard to get in there. But I do have a Dremel. And in just a minute, I'm going to take that Dremel with a drill bit. Just kind of gouge it out a little bit to make the hole a little bit bigger without breaking through the sides or deepening the hole at all. You can see when I finally do get the peg to go in um, and I place the top on it, the peg is a little bit too long for the hole. So obviously we're going to need to fill that with some sealer which is pretty simple and straightforward i'm just going to run this across the sandpaper a couple times and kind of grind down the diameter of this peg in order to get it to fit properly and then we should be good to go all right so the peg's pretty well sound sanded down as small as i can get it with the setup that i have it still doesn't quite fit it goes in but it's a little bit snug which isn't secure so what we're going to do is get that dremel i was talking about and we are gonna widen out the hole here a little bit on both the bottom and the top piece of the model. So pretty quick run with the Dremel. It's not hard. Uh, pretty much putting it straight down in the hole and applying slight outward pressure to kind of grind down the outside. So that's a little bit better. I did give it a little tap on the table to make sure it was firmly jammed in there. And it is in there pretty securely. So what we're gonna do now, since it's a little long, is clip a little bit off the end then we are going to fit the other side. And I took this guy outside for a minute just to make some adjustments. So you can see this little notch here. Now that's the part that we're going to be filling with the resin. So what I'm going to do is grab my bottle of resin and a tiny paintbrush and I'm basically just going to grab a couple of drops paint it around there. Um, then I will take it outside and rotate it so it rolls. Gravity will do most of the work here. Um, you can see me filling in the edge. I did have to do this three times. All right, now as you can see, this is where that divot was. It is pretty solid on there. And because of the way that we beaded it on there and rolled it around in the light, it is a little bit thicker there than it needs to be. But <clears throat> we can sand this down and it will eliminate any seams. So we're gonna go ahead and cure this up a little bit further uh, and then we will jump over to the painting process but so far as the bonding technique that is pretty much as good as it gets it will look a little bit better as I said after I sand it down um, but this I think is very tolerable um, you can't even really see it there is a slight blob at that angle there uh, but like I said we'll take care of that in post and our wand is pretty much complete. It just needs some post-processing and some paint. So we're just gonna do a rough sand on this spot now. Kind of take it down to level. You can use sandpaper. Uh, I use files as well, depending on on my needs and being a bone wand just doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to be uh, a little bit smoother so that's pretty close Go a little bit further right here you want to sand across the seam 
Uh, you can sand around like I was to get the, the shape right. But you want to sand across the seam and make sure that it's leveled. Spots down here where the supports were that I want to take care of. Okay. Let's see here. Let's get. Let's get the file here. chunk of support still in there get that out and take care of some of these other imperfections here of the rough sanding there with the with the file. We go back to the paper. And there we have it. Little wash up and we are ready for paint on the Voldemort wand. Alright, so here we are. We finally finished the print. We finished the paint. I will show you once again the Elder Wand that we did. This is the one that we did yesterday, um, and I liked how it came out. So we decided to do this one today, and this is Voldemort's Wand. Um, it is done in a skin PLA. It's got some, some night, or excuse me, a skin colored resin. It's a tough resin. It is pretty durable. It's got a little bit of flex to it. As you can see, here's where we mended it, uh, and you can't really tell. So. Um, I think we did a pretty good job. I like the paint on this. I think it come out pretty well. So uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this or have any ideas for printable props, let me know. We will definitely take a look at all the comments that we get in that department because this is one of my favorite things to do with a 3D printer is make things like this. Now this is simple. It doesn't really serve a purpose. It could be great for cosplay. It could be great for a kid who's into Harry Potter. But uh, I think it will look great on my wall next to the elder wand as well so the next thing we're going to do is make a stand for each of these there will be an individual stand for each one um, you can see the the bone wand is a little bit longer but i think they came out pretty nice so let me know what you think in the comments down below don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please 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 leave a like on this video because that always helps other people find our videos in youtube search so we appreciate that and we appreciate all the support you guys give us technivorous out well, that's it guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out. And know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.